Differential privacy. Okay, so I love the ideas. Here's Apple's conundrum. We want to give you all of the great features that Google now provides. We would love to scan your email and give you, you know, automatically put your boarding passes and your flight itinerary and in, into your an app. But we don't. We, we our selling point is security and privacy, and and it's really how we sell against Android and Facebook and and other things. But we would like to do this, and in fact, we've. They they showed, they said, you know, it was kind of a Me Too moment. Yes, we've got our machine learning. What do they call it? Deep learning. Deep learning. Same thing. Yep. Um, yes, we've got that. But we figured out a way, based on research from a professor at University of Pennsylvania, they quoted him, to do, uh, to aggregate information about our users without invading their personality. They call it differential privacy. Renee, what the yeah, hell is I mean that? It's super interesting. So Apple, of course, Apple's been doing machine learning and artificial intelligence for years. If you look at the way they do traffic modeling, if you look at the way they've done Siri, all of that requires a huge amount of data that then improves uh, the, the quality of those services. Uh, but the problem is that no one could really scale this. You had to make very individual silos. You couldn't sort of look for any patterns. Well, news is an example because when they released news, they said, yes. and we will adjust news based on your preferences if you if you show by clicking on these articles that you like this kind of stuff we'll give you more of it well how are you going to do that and if you don't share the data with the cloud how are you going to do it on my ipad and my iphone that's the and challenge they didn't share it, yeah and they didn't share it between their own services either i mean they had right. that whole thing on there so uh differential privacy uh, has been something that has, has been in the academic community for a while and you can go find the papers of the doctor that they, they mentioned it's, it's really high level brilliant he, he wrote the book as they said uh, absolutely, yeah. and it's way beyond my, my mathematical Well, what's interesting is, is uh, he's not just asserting that they're – so it's anonymizing data. Yeah, and so what it does is they get some really, really good examples. So let's say we have Rich and we have Andy, and one of them believes in using spaces, and one of them believes in using tabs in their code. And this is a <laughs> hey. vicious argument. This is a vicious by argument. The way, by the way, Rich, spaces or tabs? Tabs. Oh, God! All right, go ahead. So this is the actual oh, example Apple let's gave. See what, you, what your wife thought she was saying. <laughs> Apple said that they wanted to find out what their developers did, so they were going to find. They were going to actually analyze this data, but they didn't want anyone to know who answered what because wars would start, right. friendships would be destroyed, marriages would end. So they needed to do it in a way that was anonymous. So what happens is uh, they take the data and they add noise to it, uh, and then that data gets uploaded to Apple and. There's there's enough noise that they can't really tell who you are, but when they step back and they get enough quantity samples, they can, a pattern still emerges. And they figured out that I think it was 60% of people use spaces or, or some number like that. Yeah, that uh, by itself is not useful. What you really want to know is what is Rich's preference so we can put that across the board. And they can even do that without... Yes. De-anonymizing rich, which I find it's sort of, fascinating. It's a really bad example, but if you ever look at those paintings that look like just a bunch of dots, but then you get to the perfect distance and suddenly it's a horse. Yeah. But then you I'll move give, again, I, the, They, the dots they again. did give, the professor does give an example. Uh, yeah. Frequently oh, in, uh, in a job application, you're asked, uh, have you ever been arrested for a crime? And what you'd like to do is answer that without answering that. In other words, so uh, what they do is they give you two, this is, this is a very rudimentary example. They give you two questions. The first question is, flip a coin. If it's head, heads lie in the next question. If it's tails, tell the truth in the next question. Yes. And then the next question is, have you ever been arrested for committing a crime? They can't. So now they've got a lot of data, but it's fuzzed because we don't know if, mm -hmm. if Renee answered truthfully or, or lied. But we can statistically look at that yes. data, eliminate the coin results, and know, furthermore... Apparently, there's some way to know without identifying whether you as an individual did or didn't. It's, yeah, and it's bizarre. It's, it's mathematical. Because... But and the final point I want to make is it's, it, he says, and this is the important thing, because you can make a lot of claims. We've heard claims that, oh, yeah, we remember Netflix anonymized yeah. the data about uh, what movies you watched. And then some bright reporter put it together with IMDb and said, well, that's clearly yours. And so that metadata was sufficient that you could identify somebody. They say this is mathematically provable to be unidentifiable.
And the super interesting thing is that if you're in a high density city like San Francisco, they don't have to add as much noise because there's so many people around you that the data set is, is complicated enough. But if you're in a rural community and there's very few people doing what you're doing, they add a much more noise because it is much easier to sort right. of figure out the individuals there. But it's also rate controlled. So if you're hitting that system over and over and over again, it becomes easier to identify you. So they stop taking data at a certain point to make sure that they can not identify you just based on frequency of use of a similar service at a similar time. So they're doing several vectors there to make sure that that data is as anonymous as possible. And the result is you get a huge sampling set and the ability to do that statistical analysis without that being back. You can't go back the other way. It's like a one-way mirror. You can see through it, but you can't go back to it and find out the individual people or what their individual preferences are. Whew. Again, super yeah. fascinating stuff. And they do it at yeah. scale. It's, it's, it's baked into the system, which is also interesting. Yeah. It's not just a, a one-off for a certain app. Right. I got the most frustrating response to a tech email, uh, which is that actually this is uh, someone I know who who would know what they're talking about. Uh, they 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 are in research. They 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 know of this. So well, that's really really ex really exciting. I can, I can talk all about it, but I'm actually on vacation now, so I can talk. I, we can talk next week. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and but, Apple uh, has been a, a little bit, uh, you know, they've been not completely forthright about how they're implying applying this. They use the phrase yeah. differential privacy and hashing, and they refer to the professor, but that was that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of question marks still in this, uh, and one of the biggest ones still is how is this automatically better than whatever Google is doing right, right. now? Uh, because uh, I think that Google has demonstrated that at least with the data you give them, it doesn't leave Google in any meaningful way. Uh, they will sell uh, access to you from the outside, but they will not sell the information they use to give an outside person access to you. Uh, and we have millions and billions of people that are perfectly fine with that uh, that relationship with Google and Facebook. So that's part of the they, issue too. Is is that Facebook uh, Messenger issue, which is a lot of people don't care. Yep. Yeah, and and also uh, uh, t t two other things from this is that uh, Apple has to. This is the first time that Apple has really talked about artificial intelligence and the words they used to get around used to, so they wouldn't be using deep learning. Uh, whereas Google has used this as a tentpole feature right. of here is what you get when you use Google products and services. Uh, so that's not this. So the fact that your data is being hashed and anonymized is not the thing that people are going to be really, really interested in seeing. They're going to be, hey, I have a, uh, my, my, my husband, my wife has an Android phone and they swipe left to the Google Now page and it has everything that is important to them at that moment, almost as though this device is psychic. Apple, what products and services are going to give me to make my phone as useful as that uh, so it's uh, but the on the other side of that is that Apple got a lot of flack uh, a few weeks ago after the Google I.O. keynote about how oh Apple is losing the AI war they're using the intelligence war we just don't uh, Apple does not work the way that Google works their uh, their artificial intelligence and their ability to analyze data and make good use of it for the, on behalf of the users could be at least as good as Google's but you would never know about it because they're not making that a promotable thing uh, so we're going to have to see exactly how things work. Uh, a lot of uh, when they talked about uh, photos, for instance, they introduced a lot of features that seemed awfully similar to anybody who's been using Google Photos for the past year. Uh, but we're going to have to see how well they implement that. I, I really do think that if people uh, if people realize that I can do a search on Google Photos for a picture of my Aunt, uh, Aunt Ophelia in front of some sort of old building holding a dog and get a search result. And with Google, you can say, with the Apple, you can only say lady animal color and get 20 responses of which three are correct. They're not going to care so much about, uh, about hash. I'm more interested in this as uh, sort of like a, uh, when you see the lock sign uh, on the top of a web page, and you are assured by that that okay, whatever I'm doing on this web page, if I'm logging in uh, and uh, and typing in secure uh, uh, financial data, that green lock informs me that it's being done in a secure fashion. Uh, if this were an open standard, that Google will say, okay, fine, we can, we can do that too. We can also do everything we need to do with our business with that. Thank you, Apple, for letting people for developing this and uh, and promoting this because we just simply added the added the the Move lock. It also says that your data is being anonymized and hashed. So it's uh, it's just like the new file system. This is interesting stuff. We're going to have to sit on this and look at it for another year to find out whether it's actually 
important to users the way it's implemented. Yeah, it's like that we have options. I mean, I, I think that's really important yeah, exactly. for consumers. And like, like when the Edward Snowden thing broke, uh, we, I didn't really know the extent of surveillance. And it's one point you're like, well, they're just doing surveillance. But then he's like, well, a couple of my friends are checking out their ex-girlfriends. And, you know, and that's the kind of re re revelations you get. And I, you know, I trust Google. I use Google services all the time. But you're only ever one, you know, one smoking like whistleblower away from going, yeah, all my friends at Google are scanning through all the bikini pictures and doing yada, yada, yada. And then suddenly you, these things really matter to you. You. And if you had no alternative, it was all Facebook and Google and you know some other micro, maybe a LinkedIn-based service. That would be it. It would just be the reality in which we live. But even if this provides part partial service, not as much as Google, as a consumer, I might be paranoid. I might be incredibly paranoid, unreasonably paranoid. But at least I have an option <laughs> to assuage my paranoia.